TVZ with Shock T versus Tillyvolt on base or not base street on Cup America. <laughs> Go retweet that stuff, guys. We're hopping into Frost. We'll see you all in just a moment's time. Thanks again for tuning in. But here's that sick map intro. Welcome back to a brand new, a fresh, best of three. We got a player here we've already seen once earlier today. He goes in the game named by Mavis, but in the top left corner of the map, we know him better to be Shakti. In the bottom right, as uh, the Red Terran, it is hmm, Telly Volts. Yeah, I think PW is his clan name or something. On the brackets, he's listed as Telly Volts. So if it's anything it's different, then our apologies to uh to this player i'm good i got it oh that's so cool hang on i need to bring this up i'm sorry guys on the okay if you're in chat right now for cope america type exclamation mark brackets and it links you to the cope america brackets or if you're listening to the vod go find them yourselves but what's really cool is if you click on the player names they actually have these individual profiles set up for everybody player pictures bios win percentages this is actually so cool Major technically is a 100% win rate versus everything at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty legit. <clears throat> no, that's it's really, really cool. nice. It's really cool things. Like if I okay, dare I say, and this is gonna like rattle some some issues for some, I'm sure. I think honestly, Copa America's got some of the coolest production I've seen, and I would put it on par, if not like right above like WCSs, because some of the stuff they've got set up for this is just fantastic. Well, let's be honest, WCS really only has that one really cool intro. It is really flipping cool, you know, with the the guys making with the lines and stuff, but that is it. Well, I'm not just talking video intros, which, by the way, again, Copa America's got some of the coolest ones I've seen. But it's like this stuff like going to the brackets, you know? You can't go to the WCS site as easily and access this. They don't have as many pretty pictures set up. Or the biggest, coolest thing is on this site I'm looking at right now, they track the one percentages, but for this tournament only. So it's like, okay, how is Major doing in Copa, Copa America specifically compared to, like, say, his Oligulac stats? It's... It's really cool that you can look up these uh, these very specific numbers. I like this a yeah. lot, actually. The nerd in me is really happy right now. It's pretty cool to see. Hopefully, it's implemented more. We got uh, well, we got something started, anyways. It's got a drone scout, and of course, the Reaper coming out. Not a big deal. So the Bolt doesn't actually know where his opponent is quite yet. Yeah, he did get a drone snipe, which is nice, but um, you know, we haven't seen a lot of this player either. I don't know if he's willing to go for those three Reapers or if he's just going to stick to the two. I really like the power of three Reapers, but it it's kind of wasted if you don't do it correctly. Like, if you can't pick off enough Lings or a Queen or a drone, it's just not worth having invested in. It's not worth it unless you know for a fact, like on such a big map, unless you know for a fact that they're not going to go for gas. Because it's already so big, your first Reaper's not going to start that ball rolling as fast as it would. And the third Reaper, by the time it gets over there, it's already like, you know, 15 seconds to speed if they're going for that speed. Um, in this situation, Tidebolts could have done it. Yeah, he, uh, he could have had a long period of time where those Reapers could have done a lot of damage. I mean, yeah, Shakti um, did not actually go for that earlier gas. I didn't actually notice that right away. I'm just so used to every Zerg player doing that habitually because they're so used to dealing with Reapers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even if you get, if you do this and you just have Queens that defend, it's perfectly reasonable not to lose anything but a couple of Lings. Honestly, they're just you know people are really good with Queen defense, but it does. It's a little more bothersome. You know, maybe a Queen goes down because you you stop in attention for one second. If there's three Reapers with just two, not as hard. Oh, oh, and just one now. That's not going to work out. Oh, no. <laughs> well, that's a little unfortunate. Could have gone quite a bit better than that. The real, real true loss to that, though, guys, is now he doesn't have those for the Hellion follow-up, which makes this so much more differently. And whoa, hold the phone. The way he's building wow. right now. That's kind of cool. Okay, so this that's... this is a full wall-off, it's worth noting, but this is... 
the weirdest way I've ever seen it executed. I, I really, well, I don't know if I like this or not. The worst thing is, is that you can't play, like, um, hopscotch with the... Well, no, I guess you can, still. Well, anyways, you don't have supply depots automatically, so... You have a really great base defense <laughs> if you're going to go for it'll, a bailing bust. Oh, that's exactly what I was going to say. It'll stand up better than anything else that a bailing bust. But at the same time, you have to be careful. You don't lock yourself into your base. It sounds yeah. silly, but I've seen even some of the best grandmasters in Europe do that exact same move. Uh, of course, big shout out goes to Straylock, who I've seen manage to three barracks himself into his own base <laughs> before. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, he just seems to, you know, lift up that star port. I mean... I don't know the timings exactly. I'm sure that he's played enough games to know that it works out for him. It seems to be kind of still susceptible to Ling all-ins. <laughs> I don't know, but as you can see, Mavis is not going for that. Going to play pretty greedy. I kind of feel like even scarier than this was if if, if Shakti had gone for like a Roach bailing bust, like the three base all-in we see Hyun do, I think that would have... Uh perhaps wrecked Telebolts because he wouldn't have to go through the first wall. There's not going to be a bunker down there. That's the biggest detriment to this wall. No bunker. Yeah, and roaches, you know, they out, they have range. <laughs> so if you go for any type of roach attack, then those buildings potentially die at the very least. Have to lift and just let them into your main anyways. So it's, uh, it's interesting. Unfortunately, we're not going to really see the, uh, I don't know, the tests of durability for it. Or at least not in this game, maybe the next series. Well, as funny as it is to look at this and over-criticize it, guys, I've seen weirder walls, and I've seen better walls, I've seen worse walls. We'll see if this one even comes into effect right now, because right now he's looking to put a lot of pressure on the other side of the map. He's got the Hellings over here that have been picking away at these queens, poking at them where they can, but if he's going to go for the suicide oh, move for drones... That? That's what oh, I was that wondering. Was a messed like, up suicide move. Yeah, that's what I kind of thought was happening. Like, you got the other three stuck behind the mineral lines and wasn't, like, gathered for that. Ooh, ooh, just a little... A little questionable control from Chelly Vault so far. Uh, he, he took too much damage with that, I think. These Hellings are all really low. He, didn't, he has another Reaper, so the goal of having the Reaper alive, by the way, is not only they add damage, but they also add potential misfires, pretty much, because they heal. You get them to target the, the Reaper instead of the Hellions, and the Reapers just come back later. But <clears throat> no, he has really low health Hellions. A couple of Queens can take care of it. It's still a powerful attack, though, because that Banshee, you know, if there's not enough Queens, that Banshee can, can wreck. Or if it's not an Overseer, that too. He should probably, he could die with the Hellions, but then it would open him up to a link counter attack. Well, we got Stim Time and Kimmy behind this, so it's not like he's getting overly focused or tearing play, that is, on the front lines. Uh, I like the kind of haphazard spore cars we have coming down, because he didn't really know where that Banshee was going to angle in from, and one of the biggest things you want to protect, of course, is your drone transfer line. Uh, this Overlord was sacrificing the main to go for a scout. Confirms that A, it's going to be bio, but B, double engineering bays are down. So it's not like uh, our Terran player is going a little bit lazy with that by any means. Of course, the rare situations where you don't go double engineering base is usually because you're looking to put on a little more aggression through actual units. You know, you save that 125 minerals, put it towards four more marines or something, but uh, there are three more because, you know, I can do math. Either way, not going to end up happening here. The Banshees are still alive and a lot of these Hellions are up, but quite frankly, I kind of feel like if he doesn't bring these home to repair them, they're useless. You can try and throw them away right now, maybe get a drone kill or two, but, you know, in the, in the mid game, they're going to soak ba uh, bailing hits, they'll kill a lot of Zerglings and bailings as well. Throwing them away like this has got to be a mistake. Yeah, they're also the only thing that really stops from a Ling counterattack. With this many Lings, you can go straight for the third and start attacking the SCV line, maybe even force a lift off. Um, the bunker's not ready, doesn't have that many Marines. These Marines being out here just as they are is already oh. kind of a risk. And even though he's got two layers in the wow. wall! Even though he's got yeah. two layers in the wall! The d uh, the Wait, why is he retreating? Just getting on top of the siege tank. Yeah, that's what he's doing. <laughs> he's getting on top of the SCVs, which is even worse, because that's the tank! Splash damage firing. for Terrans is so bad. But he doesn't get the he doesn't get the tank in the end. And the problem is when you look at How the workers this, killed. Oh. Well, hang on. This is really important, guys. You look at the workers killed, and it shows 21 SCVs. But Blizzard doesn't track friendly fire kills either. So a few more than 21 actually died just now. Wait, so if tanks kill an SCV, it doesn't track it? Yeah, it's the same with Banelings. Um, if they don't get killed, like if they detonate, it doesn't count their stuff either. Like it'll count workers killed. But not like the friend. It, it's so dumb. I hate the way friendly fire works in this game. Huh. Interesting. I did not know that. So. Because I guess it's like a suicide. Maybe I don't know. But this attack is not that. I don't know if it was really worth it. He could have gotten the tank and left. Yeah. Well, I mean, he did technically get the tank and leave, but. With one ling. <laughs> yeah. It's not an attack that's really worthwhile. He does have an upgrade advantage, but this is something we're used to seeing in TVZ. A lot of the times, the Zerg is going to get to 2 2 first, but then they get stuck on that tech. I don't think that's going to be the case here for Shakti, though, because not only does he have three bases mining pretty nicely at the moment with what is 69 workers, <laughs> uh, he's got a fourth base on the way. So painful. So painful. Tell you, Vultur got his armory. 
Oh no, he went double on Janine Bays. So late. Double on Janine Bays, no armory. That's got a sting. And let's not forget his production was hampered by uh, by that attack quite a bit. Oh, and he forgot combat shields as well. Oh but, no, things are not looking good for Televolts. But that's okay, because Shakti keeps throwing away a hell of a lot of lanes for nothing. So in the end, <laughs> they both equally make mistakes. Yeah, you know, Mito should already be out right now. I'm questioning what's going well, I'm on thinking... here. He's going to go for like a 2 2 Ling all in. Well, this. Thing. This is what I'm more focused about. We we don't have Sutra oh, Full Hooks. Good. He waited so long to make his first batch of Banelings. I mean, quite frankly, oh. it's, I mean the Banshee's gonna be a problem, but beyond that, like he can't even do, he can barely deal with the Marines. Oh, that's that is a huge problem. So luckily for both players, both players are making mistakes, is all yes. that is that's to say. The awkward bottom line here. Yeah. Okay, alright, so honestly, even look at supply counts, guys, they're making so many mistakes. They've they done you know taking so much damage on each side. Still kind of where it's supposed to be, it's easy. You done goofed. Uh, these Banelings could go for the mineral lines. There's this a lot of juicy SCVs either. over no, there. No. This is... Uh, okay, yeah, he's gonna drop on top he, of the he Banelings. He doesn't do anything. That was not worthwhile either. The Banelings did no damage. Like, it's not like <laughs> they were just bad damage. They actually did no damage. I think a big part of this for Mavis too, or sorry, Shakti, was the choice to engage A off of creep, but B without speed was a mistake. I mean, it looks fine yeah. when you're chasing a Terran player back, but he just needed to play defensive there. There's no reason to get that aggressive about it. Yeah, absolutely right. His fourth base is also at a questionable position. He's getting a fifth of the one that you would usually see in, in these cross positions. But, I mean, if Televolts could easily just... Because you're already attacking that direction, you just splinter off a couple of units, and you're, you're, you're good to go to kill that fourth base. I don't really like it. Oh. Let's see if Televolts actually gets a chance to push out, though. Hang on. Maybe his name's Ellie Volts. Is that a T in you the know, clan tag? I was tag? wondering that, because that looks like tag, You it can looks... see in the clan tag, it's PWT. Like the, I didn't see that T when we introduced him earlier. But I, I, well, that's what I was looking at just now, the clan thing. So when I zoomed in to check on the decal, a decal, sorry, Americans. I mean, I was like, like Whoa. His... So is it Ellie Volts? I'll have to ask him after the game. I'm going to keep calling. I think calling... it's Ellie Volts. You know what? I'm going to call him Telly Volts for now, just for consistency's sake. But I'm going to ask him after this. My apologies if it's Ellie Volts this whole time, guys. Oh. Sorry, I'm just. Uh, this UI is not something I'm used whoa, to looking whoa. at at all. What? What is going on? There's two Starports on the way. Is he. <laughs> what? He's already got one down. I can't That's help but think. Even it, it, like, it can't be. He doesn't have the gas to really support this. Mass air. Why would you use that medevac? Are you kidding me? Oh god. He takes oh, the no. medevac with three HP. He's. This is a <laughs> oh, queen will one shot this. Anything will oh, look at this no. and one shot this. Zerglings could probably somehow stack up and fall over and kill this. <laughs> that could be terrible. That could be just a free kill for. Uh, Mavis, but no, right, we finally see Telebolts uh, pushing out here. You need, can't, don't, there's no reason to engage off for you. He's got there's speed really right now. No yeah, he's gonna get on top of the tanks too. The, again, the Bailey's really doing minimal damage, but. Uh, hey, where are the Marines? Where are the Marines? Why aren't there any Marines off? with these tanks? Well, no, that's what I was gonna start bringing up. The, these Mutalists have been picking them off one at a time this entire game. Like, it, it doesn't seem like much when they're individually picked off one at a time, but suddenly you realize you, you've got like eight Marines instead of 50. He's only. He's, he's gonna only lose to the men. Eric's production. That's well, the he went, problem. It's because he went double starport for yeah, yeah. Vikings mm -hmm. that he doesn't have. I don't know. It's strange build here out of our uh, Ellie Volts player. Telly Volts. Uh, yeah. I said I was going to do Telly Volts for consistency. And I messed it up right away. Uh, where did that dropship go, by the way? He actually killed a hatchery while this was going on. Worth noting. But uh, Shakti just a little too far ahead. A very, very strange game. That was messy. You know, I'm... On both sides. I mean, honestly, there was. there was no perfect play out of either player there. No, but, no, no. But I'm hoping that it was just nerves. Like, they're going to shake that off. Well, possibly. Either way, Shakti walks out victorious in game number one. Uh, as stated before, that's the best of three guys. And like we said, we're going to cast as much as we can for you, regardless of who, where, what. I got this lobby now. All right. Yeah, we're also in that channel now, too, to, to invite the players. No, I gotta go swap some stuff out, so don't go right away or anything like that.
Okay, I am officially set up on my end, whatever you're good on your end. And uh, it turns out it is Ellie Volts, guys. Our bad. Alright, but we'll see you guys here in a sec for the map intro. Welcome back. We're in action. This is game number two. It's currently a best of three, and Shakti is leading at the moment. Uh, speaking of Shakti, spot in the top right corner of the map. You might see that name, Mavis, but it is the Blue Zerg player, Shakti. Perhaps one of the best Brazilians? We'll have to wait and find out. The top left as the Red Terran, it is Ellie Volts. Alright, so we did ask him and our sincere apologies go out. I had assumed it was Televolts because I had seen one of the admins write Televolts earlier on. So you just kind of go what they say. I didn't realize it was actually PWT is the clan and Elevolts is his name. So our apologies to the Elevolts fans of the world and to him himself. We will make sure to say it correctly this time. But that was, a, you know, we had a really sloppy game that went out of both players. It was a real slugfest, I think was the best way to describe it. I want to say Shakti made some cool moves, but honestly, he did a lot of instances where he was throwing Zerglings away, Banley's off a creep, without speed, no less. I kind of feel like if, if Ellie Volts had not gone for the tank composition and had just gone straight bio, pump 13 Marines at a time, he would have won that game. Even without, like, super splits or anything. Yeah. I was honestly excited to see what he could do with the tank production. We have seen in pro games, pro gamers everywhere, occasionally they will throw in some type of tank push. Um, and we've even seen it on that map where they, they either were already preparing for an all-in and they figured, I got tanks, let me use them. Or they're just trying something new because what of mines are you know, not what they used to be. But didn't happen. He tried transitioning far too early into Starport, even with double tank production you can still afford more than five barracks on three bases that was just questionable and i would figure that he would have just forgotten it because at the end of the day it's kind of only a hundred gas with two reactors and then it's nothing but minerals where usually you're going to be starved for gas when it comes to star ports well there's also one big dynamic to tanks that i think a lot of people don't know about and that's the tanks have a weird dynamic versus zerglings when sieged up guys a siege mode tank can one shot a zergling with no armor no problem but if the Zergling is one armor, uh, the splash damage doesn't kill anything around it. it, it takes the hit, it's not that big of a deal. But if a Siege Tank has one level upgrade, it continues to one shot through any level of Zerg armor. So if you're sitting there with naked Siege Tanks like we had Ellie Volts doing, and we had Mavis on 2-2, or sorry, um, Shakti on 2-2, I mean, you're really you're not going to kill things with Siege Tanks. They're going to be strictly for Banlings, and uh, I don't think there was any focus fire around that at all that last game, so... Hopefully, if he is going to go for that same composition, he starts taking advantage of the units he has and not, not the disadvantage, I guess, that he was playing with. Yeah. Just kind of play a, a cleaner game in general. His style could potentially still work out, but it, you know, there was something that went wrong. Maybe it all just started to collapse after that first you know, mess up with the Reaper. <laughs> like Even starting from there, sometimes people get really tilted with just the smaller things. Or, I don't know. I don't know what else, but hopefully well, he can fix it. Well, that's the big thing I was going to bring up next. Like, I, I really hope these Reapers stay alive this time. A lot of what we saw for that last game, too, and this is another example of why that game kind of fell apart quickly, was those Hellions had no buffer for them. Without any buffer of the Reapers soaking those hits, as we see, they go down pretty quickly. They don't have a lot of health. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, yeah, your yeah. favorite... I, I'm, I'm name-dropping left and right in the stream tonight, and I'm apologist. I don't normally name-drop this much. But again, another thing worth noting is you'll see players like Jokshi, one of the best Terrans around. He actively repairs his Hellions because he knows how critical it is to keep those alive. If you suicide in for a scout, use only one Reaper. It's usually right. the way to go. <laughs> I, he, he got out though, so that's that's in the end, that's what's important. 
I don't think he actually saw the other gas guy there. No, he didn't. So he has, still has no idea when when Ling Speed is coming out. I mean, the, the real reason or not, you have to take your Reapers back home. If you don't take your, have to take your Reapers back home before the six minute mark, you can stick around and potentially snipe the drone. If you want to make the third, or at the very Creep least, tumors. confirm that there is a third. Yeah, no dimension stop. Creep tumors pick off Ling's. Uh, as far as timings go, guys, if a, if a Zerg player has gas when you scout them, if you're really precise at the game, you can click at the geyser and kind of guesstimate how much has already been taken because they only need 100. But for the most part, if you see no gas, you know speed's not going to be out at that 6 minute mark, your clock to go home isn't there. And he's already got two Hellings coming across the map. I'm actually a little bit worried here for Shakti this time, who doesn't have a whole lot to deal with this, and there's a Banshee follow-up as well. As long as he gets maybe a fourth queen and, and a single squirt crawler, Queens and a couple of lings, even if they're slow, will defend this. This is a very kind of easy position where they can find, you know, a good position to both protect not only the third, but also the ramp. Uh, so he, sh he should be okay. But the, uh, Ellie Vault is going for something that can snowball. You kill one queen when they're not looking and suddenly two queens ain't that big of a deal. Yeah, not to mention the fact that uh, there's not a whole lot of transfuse energy here. It's the, the ones with transfuse that are being poked on right now. Yeah. But there's a layer coming up behind this, so, I mean, if he can get to Mutalisk safely, he'll be okay. That's a big if. Okay. The Overlord got into the main. It saw that the tech lab and the, the starport was there. In fact, that was the easiest scout ever, thanks to the positions. Isn't this funny, though? I mean, oh, wow, loses a heli. That's not good. A long time ago, you could never do this with Overlords. There's two Overlords floating in the main. This would be suicide. It'd be a waste. It'd be a huge loss because Marines would clean them up. But Terran players are so used to playing with no anti-air. Oh my god, another healing goes down. That uh, it, it's, it's really become something that's going to become more complacent about. Hopefully it doesn't stay here for too long though, because there will eventually be what of mines, Vikings, Marines, you name it. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I'm surprised there's not already at least one or two Marines. Um, it's, it's the the barrier expression is not used when you, uh, when you switch it like this usually, because you wait to switch it back onto the tech lab of the starport. But I, I guess he doesn't care that <laughs> it's being completely scouted. Just kind of like, whatever, hanging out. Alright, well, coming back home, I'm not sure... Uh, <laughs> Ellie Volts was taking uh, way too much damage from those queens. I mean, honestly, losing two, three Hellions like that was just was not worth it. The Banshee tries to get over here, but of course there's a Spore Crawl and a Queen to thwart it. So, I mean, his his potential for aggression is kind of already done for, I feel. Yeah, that's why we usually don't see the Banshee paired off, by the way, anymore, is because when, obviously, he got the Scout and he knew he got the Scout, they're going to have a Spore Crawler, and that's all you really need. Uh, it just seems to be so much more effective to try and kill the queens out in front and then start that rolling as opposed to trying to get the free drone kills that could be there, but probably not. <clears throat> now, I'm not sure if we're in round three or four. Mm -hmm. I think we're in round three, three. at the moment. Yeah. yeah. So what's worth noting, guys, is, again, while Ellie Vault's got a bit of awkward play stylings to him, he did get here. I mean, this isn't like a bracket, but there's a ton of walkovers. Let's not forget there's a lot of sharks in here as well, like Major and such. So, oh, he's going to lose uh -oh. the Uh-oh. Oh, so. <laughs> yeah. When he turned around for a second with the queens, I was like, really? Just kind of like, yeah. come on. <laughs> That's what I was doing too. But he's going for tanks again. Like, this is so problematic. There's no anti-air available yet. Stimpak is going to be a million years off. And quite frankly, if Shakti had any inkling of an idea this was the case, I mean, the Overlord just has to move a little bit to the right to see the tech lab still spinning. He could snipe that off. Right? And if you snipe you... tech... Yeah, like, if you snipe off a Stimpak, that's oh, it. Oh, no. Terror players are done. Oh, my God, no. Oh, this is so painful. Uh, what do you- that- okay, Your well, Helen's just gonna die too? I don't know. Okay. I mean, I don't know how he could have thought that there weren't gonna be Mutalisks for this long, or maybe he just became complacent about it, but, uh, he does finally have some marine production underway. Medivacs are great, but who cares if you got four Medivacs if there's nothing for them to heal? Overlord! Go kill that Overlord! Like, I know you already- like, there's nothing oh else- Oh my god, it's still here? Out. Are you serious?! <laughs> but you still have to kill it! He's building turrets! The turret is gonna reach the Overlord and chase it off. Look at this! There we go, finally two overlords about to be picked off. <laughs> okay, alright, alright. This is actually gonna supply lock um uh Shakti. Oh that other turret! That other weird Crazy. turret. Oh okay, it's the marine that gets it in the end. Alright, alright, so <coughs> This is silly. Uh the income right now is actually surprisingly the <laughs> same. We do have sixty six workers apiece, but of course there's the power of mules for Ellie Volts. But his tech is so far behind. His upgrades, granted he's going to have 1-1, but as we see, without combat shields, they can't really stand up to Mutalisks. Marines just aren't going to stand the chance. And if they stem on top of this, the Glaive Worm's just going to kill them that much faster. Oh, snipe this tech lab. Oh, my God. This is just... Oh, he snipes that tech lab, but it's so huge. I mean, he's still got time to do it. Uh, not anymore, but he had time to do that if he had recognized that was the case. That could have been a game-ending move. 
Yep, yep, yep. It just seems, I, you know, maybe Elevolt's just doing something new because he's, he's afraid and he isn't really, like... Because there's got to be something. I mean, this guy's in Masters. He got this far. Maybe he didn't play Zerg player until now, and now he's trying to change it up, but hasn't really, like, thoroughly practiced the build. You know, something like that. Oh. No, this is such bad luck. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, guys. Stop bringing up and I... Like, we're Terrans, and I can feel it in my heart when that happens. Because, uh, I I know that pain. Yeah, that's... That's that's the worst. I mean, you see Warpism go down, eh, whatever. Medivac goes down, suddenly it's like your baby just died. And of course, he had all these units in the 6 health Medivac and loads them immediately. Really smart choice there as we see it goes down. But was that a Glaveworm bounce that killed it? Yeah, pretty sure, pretty sure. Because <laughs> it didn't right. look like they focused it. All right. Enough about Ellie Vaults. He, uh, he's, he's, I think what he's trying to do right now is just play really conservative. Oh, oh that's this shields. is going to hurt too. It's not as bad as losing Stimpak, of course. But no. It's not, but it's still, it still sucks. still sucks. Um, but yeah, so he's doing something weird. He's being a lot more defensive. Maybe he goes to try uh, and get to that the, that starport again. I don't know. But we do have a, a Zerg player in this game who... And you know, the reason we really talk about him is because he's been playing a normal game. Again, his bailing speed seems to be late, but Televolts never did... Or Elevolts rather that never did there's, the typical attack. Right, there's never been a situation where he had to rush that out. He could afford to kind of sit back like this. And now he has spiraled out of control. He's maxed. He's ready to rock and roll. He's clearing out a lot of the tanks, so the Bailings and Zerglings will come in unhindered. I mean, well, this, this is looking really bad for Televolts. Or for Elevolts. Uh, for Elevolts. <laughs> right, yeah, because the T's capitalized, that's fine. Well, that, and like, Again, we said it wrong the first time, so it sticks with you. Not enough Marines to cover this. This is like, this is so hard to think, but because there's so little Marines, so many tanks, a mostly Ling army is actually more effective compared to what we usually see with Ooh. one of mines and Marines. Oh, this finally, really a good nice. drop did not get picked off. That's really nice. Um, but where Bailings are more effective against what of mines and Marines. And this one versus one one. He gets the hatchery. Finally gets a bit of damage in here. It's about time Elivolt's got his presence on the board. It's not the most devastating snipe in the world, because he didn't clear the workers out with it by any means, but still, shutting your opponent down to three is a lot better than having him spiral out of control with four. Yeah. The problem is that you're not really doing Whoa. anything behind it. Do you see this upgrade? Yes, three starports, a raven, okay. trying to get back to what he was doing. Right, so he was going, I guess he was going to go for ravens last time. This is, again, another situation though where I really feel for, like, Elliebolt's, it's, it, he's trying to eat his dessert before his dinner. You can't really afford to do this. It, that's a good analogy. It's, it's pretty good. What I think it, is that we have been seeing bio... Uh, mech come out. This job doesn't do a whole lot. But we haven't seen bio mech either. People have been adding in three factories and, you know, going from there with just bio, or they've literally been going from mech to bio or vice versa. The only thing I can imagine is that he's trying to do something like that, except that it's bio to ravens. But there is a very good reason as to why mech to ravens is usually the case. And that's because with mech, you're not supposed to lose a lot of units, so you can afford to use that gas on gas oh. on, on ravens only combat on the shields. Bases. Was that combat seriously shields. combat shields? Again, oh. twice. So all these marines, guys, you gotta remember, like, not only do they have, like, low base HP, but when they stim, they're down to 35. So these units really don't have a lot of health. Uh, we got Bailings rolling in with Zerglings this time, so it's not just Zerglings slamming in here, but quite frankly, there's nothing to really stop this. Even the tanks are just being destroyed here. Mauled up on the ramp, they're all grouped up and ready to go. Last couple tank shots are gonna go off before going down, but there's still Bailings rolling in. The Mutals have been somewhat untouched. Look at this pile of green, the pile of blood, the red everywhere. There's a hell of a lot of turrets, which I think Mavis was, or sorry, uh, Shakti was a little unexpected, but still w just walks through everything. It's surprising. If one thing I was going to say is that Elevolt probably was not going to be busted. This is um, why you don't go Ravens versus Mutal. Whoa, no, no, hang whoa, on, hang on, whoa, those whoa, are actually going to connect! Oh, wow. Okay, so some decent damage, but if we're going to be honest, that was about the same as a Widowmine hit. And if we could, quite frankly, critique Shakti, he hasn't been making Overseers at all. So, I mean, Widowmines would have been more effective, more cheap, more costly. Like, I just... Ravens, I like them for the late, late game. You can't go for them early. And with Mac. Yeah, with mech especially, but I mean the big thing there too, guys. Like it didn't happen. I was about to start getting all condescending about it, but like mutals are so fast, they outrun the, the seeker missiles. They, they turn them into duds. It's a waste of 75 energy. Auto turrets honestly are better for this situation, and even auto turrets, as we see, are not doing much. Yeah. Mm, gonna this one's gonna one go off. off. This one's gonna do good damage too. Actually, I mean, yeah, wow. <laughs> Those yeah, seeker missiles do more than what mines. I think it's four what mines to kill mutals, but apparently only two seeker missiles. But you rarely get the seeker missiles. Out. Uh, well, GG's calling the end. It looks like Shakti will continue through the brackets on a tear. Congratulations to him.